Hi, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a poem from NCERT's English textbook for class 11. The title of the book is Hornbill and the poem is from unit 4. The title is The Voice of the Rain written by Walt Whitman. Let us first know about the poet and then we will discuss the poem. Walt Whitman was a famous American poet and essayist from the 19th century. He witnessed the civil war which centered on abolishing slavery and chronicled life with openness and detail. He did not use regular meters in poetry like his contemporaries but instead used free verse and this poem that we are going to read today is also an example of free verse. His works were hailed as powerful commentaries on everyday life, individuals and the nation. The poem The Voice of the Rain is a conversation between the poet and the rain. See the poet is talking to the rain. The device of personification that is giving a voice and persona to raindrops makes the poem intriguing. Now the poem, the droplets, the rain has been personified by the poet and they are both talking to each other. At another level, the aesthetic strategy is a reminder of the metaphorical cues that nature and natural elements often give us such as thunderstorms signaling some danger, a rainbow signifying good times or hope. So before we begin with the poem, I have a few questions for you to reflect. Do you listen to the rain or not? Do you? I think we all listen. Do you talk to the rain or not? What feelings does it bring to your mind when it's raining? Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you concerned? Can you compare rain to music? Can you? Maybe I think we all can. So these are some of the questions I have given you to reflect and jot down your views about it. I am going to give you just 30 seconds. Have you jotted down your points? I am sure you must have. Let us now see what the rain has to say to the poet. The voice of the rain. As you all know that poems are meant to be read aloud with proper intonation, stress and rhythm. I will read the poem aloud for you. You also please open your books on page 41. And who art thou, said I, to the soft falling shah, which, strange to tell, gave me an answer, as here translated, I am the poem of earth, said the voice of the rain, eternal, I rise, impalpable, out of the land and the bottomless sea, upward to heaven, whence vaguely formed altogether changed and yet the same, I descend to lave the droughts, atomies, dust layers of the globe and all that in them without me were seeds only, latent, unborn and forever by day and night I give back life to my own origin and make pure and beautify it for song issuing from its birthplace after fulfillment wandering, wrecked or unwrecked, duly with love return. Did you enjoy listening to the poem? Have you understood the holistic meaning of the poem? You see when we read the poem, 
we first notice the words that are unfamiliar. We try to gather their meaning from the context of the poem, right? And then we look at the punctuation marks of the poem. The punctuation marks help us understand the poem. If it is a comma, it is a smaller pause. If it is a full stop, that means one idea has come to an end. And now the poet is going to begin with the new idea. So, in this poem probably the words that were uh, unfamiliar, wrecked or unwrecked, it means whether cared for or not cared for. It does not affect the rain nor the poet if someone listened to the rain or not. They both are enjoying their conversation. Now, whence here means where, vaguely not very clearly, descent it comes down and the poet uses the word lave over here that means to wash, to clean. Actually when it rains the whole world is cleaned. The leaves are clean, the roads are clean, everything looks very fresh. Now, atom is small particles, latent is hidden or buried somewhere. The seeds are buried in the earth, but the moment they get water and they start sprouting and that is the magic of rain. Who art thou? Who are you? It is a never ending process for the rain. And the poet uses the word impalpable, which cannot be described. So, very beautifully he has used those words which convey the entire process. The poet Walt Whitman attracts the attention of the reader to the idea that may seem strange to some that he is talking to the rain shower. The rain tells the poet that it is the poem of the earth and has risen continuously from the land and the bottomless ocean in the form of vapors. So, the rain is telling that I rise from the earth itself, I belong to the earth. I rise from the bottomless ocean from the sea and also from the earth in the form of vapors. The rain also tells the poet that it rises upwards towards the sky in the form of vapors where it changes its form because condensation takes place into water droplets. It also says that although its form changes, it still remains the same. And then the rain comes down to wash away the drought and it provides water. It also washes away the dust and small particles from the earth's surface. The seeds inside the earth also grow into a plant because of the water provided by the rain. It gives life to the seeds. The rain also says that by day and night it provides life care, enrichment and water to the place from where it originated. We say, generally we say that rain is coming from the clouds, but it originates from here, from the earth. The rain keeps enhancing the beauty and purity of the earth by preparing a life cycle for itself again. And at the same time, it gives water. It is a source for other life cycles. The rain is like a song that originates from its birthplace. It is like a song. It travels across lands all over the globe, all over the world and returns to the singer's ears. This affirmative cycle also applies to the rain that returns to its point of origin, its birthplace with love and affection. So, have you gathered the meaning? 
I am going to read the poem again now for you so that you understand the poem as a whole. Right? Now you know the meanings of unfamiliar words also and you have understood the central idea of the poem, the voice of rain. The rain is connecting itself to the earth. It is part of us. It is the source of life that we have around us. I am going to read it again. Pay attention and this time your comprehension will be better. And who art thou? Said I to the soft falling shower. The poet is talking to the rain. Who are you? Which strange to tell. Give me an answer as here translated. And the rain talked to the poet. And the answer, the reply is translated in the following lines. I am the poem of earth, said the voice of the rain. He says, I belong to the earth. I am the music of the earth. How beautiful, eternal, I rise impalpable out of the land and the bottomless sea. I rise from this land only, from the sea, and which cannot be felt impalpable. I go up upward to heaven, whence vaguely formed altogether, where it, my form changes, but I still remain the same. I descend to lave the droughts, atomies, dust layers of the globe, lave, to wash away the droughts if there are any. We all wait for rain, agriculturists wait for rain, we as human beings wait for rain. If it's very hot, we welcome rain. She says she washes away all those things, the dirt, the drought, or if there is any particles. And all that in them without me were seeds only, latent, unborn. Seeds also need rain to sprout into a tree. And forever by day and night, I give back life to my own origin. She says, I give back life to my origin. I belong to this earth. I rise from here. This is my birthplace. And I give back life to this earth. Without water, there is not going to be any life that we all understand. So what a beautiful way of giving back. And all of us, are here not to take only but to give back in some form or the other. This is a beautiful message and make pure and beautify it. She makes everything pure. Everything is now nice and shining. Everything is beautiful. Don't you feel it that way? I feel it that way. I am sure you also feel the same. I continue. For song issuing from its birthplace after fulfillment wandering. The rain comes back to its birthplace. It wanders, it rises from here, goes up in the sky and then comes back to its birthplace. And it comes back like a song. Isn't it? When it is raining, we really like the sound of rain. Wrecked or unwrecked, duly with love returns whether recognized or not recognized. Some people appreciate, some people don't appreciate, but it comes back to its origin. Have you enjoyed reading the poem with me? So have you understood the idea behind it? My next task for you is to annotate it now. Like I annotated it for you in the beginning. You annotate it, Write down the annotation. You compare the annotation with your friends. Annotation, you write the summary, what the poet is trying to convey to us. The poet has used many literary devices in this poem. The most important one is personification. The poet used a non-living thing as a living thing in the poem. Rain, non-living thing. 
but the poet has used it as a living thing which takes birth from here, goes up and then comes back and sings a song for us. For example, I have taken these two lines from the poem. I am the poem of earth, said the voice of the rain. The rain is talking to the poet. He says, I am the poem of earth. Then the poet has used another literary device that is metaphor. Metaphor is an indirect comparison between the qualities of different things. I am the poem of earth. The rain is being compared to a poem. Then hyperbole. Hyperbole means exaggerated statements, bottomless sea. This is exaggerated. Sea also has a bottom. Imagery, visual description of something. Soft falling shower. Imagine it in front of your eyes. Rain is falling. How beautiful. The poet has used words that create a vivid image in front of our eyes. Isn't it? Now let us discuss a few questions for comprehension check. There are two voices in the poem. Two voices? Yes. What are these two voices? The voice of the rain and the poet. Now which lines indicate this? The lines which indicate the voice of the rain are, I am the poem of earth, said the voice of the rain. And the lines which indicate the voice of the poet are, and who art thou, said I to the soft falling shower. So in the beginning itself, we are introduced to that conversation. And then we see the poet and the rain talking to each other. It creates a vivid image in front of our eyes. Otherwise also, when we think of rain, we can visualize that image in front of our eyes. Rain is falling, everything looks clean, everything looks clear. Nature is at its best. My next question to you is, what does the phrase strange to tell mean? The phrase strange to tell conveys that it is not realistic for a rain chart to have a voice. Yet, if we listen carefully at the philosophical level, we may learn a thing or two from the rain. It is also a creative device to convey the beauty of life cycle where we all undergo changes in life but our affinities lie with our birthplaces, our points of origin. I hope this is clear. See, the poet is talking to us at a philosophical level also that we always get back to our birthplace. We are attached to our places of origin. Next question is, there is a parallel drawn between rain and music. Which words indicate this? Explain the similarity between the two. I am giving you 30 seconds. Go back to your poem. Quickly go through the poem and underline the words that bring out the similarity between the two. Have you been able to find? I am sure you must have. The lines for the song issuing from its birthplace after fulfillment, wandering, wrecked or unwrecked, duly with love returns, draws a parallel between rain and music. Here, the poet compares the life cycle of the rain with that of a song. The rain is like a song that originates from its birthplace, travels across lands and returns to the singer's ears. Similarly, the rain that originates from earth fulfills its duty to beautify and purify the earth and wanders and comes back with love for its creator. Next question, how is the cycle movement of rain brought out in the 
poem. You must have read this in science also. Compare it with what you have learnt in science. In the poem, water rises from the land and the bottomless sea in the form of vapour. It then changes its form, transforms itself into clouds. It comes down to the earth in the form of rain to wash away drought, provide water as well as give life to unborn and latent seeds inside the earth. The rain purifies and beautifies the earth. In science too, we study the water cycle. Isn't it the same? Hmm? It is the same. Water evaporates in the form of water vapour, condenses in the sky to form clouds and then rains down in the form of water into rivers, streams, lakes, oceans, etc. In the poem, the rain describes its eternal journey itself. And how? You know, we can see that learning cuts across the curriculum. A lesson of science is also taught over here. Next question, why are the last two lines put within the brackets? The last two lines are put within the bracket because they are the observations made by the poet and his thoughts. He makes a comparison between the rain and music. Therefore, he has put it in brackets. First two lines he introduces us to the conversation and then the rain is talking to him and last two lines his, his observation. Important thing in a poem is the use of words. I want you to look at the use of words, how words have been used in the poem. Words are very powerful in a way that they create images in front of our eyes. There is an activity for you, a very simple one, list the pairs of opposites found in the poem. I have, you know, given a few examples, day, night, wrecked, unwrecked, rise, descend. Now, I leave it to you to find out the opposites as well as the use of vocabulary. And try changing a word here and there. Do you think the power of the uh, or the magic of the poem changes? It will definitely change. Let us do this activity. Notice the following sentence patterns. I will read the sentences for you. And who art thou? said I to the soft falling shower. I am the poem of earth, said the voice of the rain. Eternal I rise, for song duly with love returns. These sentences I have taken from the poem. Can you rewrite these sentences in the form of prose? Why not? Try writing it. Again, I am giving you 30 seconds to do the activity and then we will share. Have you done it? Okay, the first sentence can be written, I ask the soft falling shower about its identity. The voice of the rain presented herself as the poem of earth. The rain told the poet that she rises upwards in a never ending process. The fourth one, the poet says that rain and music are similar to the song originates from the heart of the singer. It travels across and fulfills its purpose. It comes back with all the love for the singer. I have a writing task for you. Write a poem or song on water or rain. Try writing it. You can read more poems before you start writing. That is the research work you will do. Notice the vocabulary that is being used in these poems. Probably it will give you an idea. You may or may not use the device of personification or give it a voice. You can have your own style of, you know, composing a poem. The next task is write a short essay on the topic. Water is the 
elixir of life. Is the essence of life can we live without water? Just not possible. So, you have to write a short essay on this importance of water in our life. You must have read that astronauts are going on moon, on Mars and what are they looking for? Life. And they say that if water is there, life will be there. So, water is important for all of us. Here also do little bit of research. Hmm? How water bodies are being destroyed, they are being polluted, what can be done to save them and write a short essay. Of course, follow the process approach to writing. Then there is an extended activity which you can do and share with your friends. Collect at least two folk songs or local songs on rain or water. Write their summaries in 200 words each. First you have to collect the songs. You can talk to your parents, grandparents, your family members. See rain song, water songs are very popular in every culture because they are associated with life, with agriculture, with every activity of human beings, with every ritual of human beings. Then first you write down the songs, write their summaries. You should also mention when the songs are sung or performed. With this we have come to the end of this session. I want you to read the poem, enjoy the poem and write another poem. Happy learning. Thank you.